you're going to meet an old man or woman someday down the road, 10, 30, 50 years from now, waiting there for you. You'll be catching up with him or her. What kind of old person are you going to meet? That old person, by the way, is you. Some of us met that old person this morning when we looked in the mirror, but even older than this. <laughs> what kind of old person are you going to meet? What are you becoming, of course, is what he's asking. She may be a seasoned, soft, gracious person who has grown old gracefully, surrounded by those who call her blessed because of what her life has meant to them. Or he may be a bitter, disillusioned old buzzard without a good word for anyone. Not naming names. That old person will be you. They'll be the composite of everything you do, say, and think today and tomorrow. His mind will see in a mold you have made by your beliefs and choices. Her heart will be turning out what you've been putting into it. Every little thought, every deed goes into this old person. Every day in every way you are becoming more and more like yourself. You're becoming yourself more and more, which of course can be a good thing or less good. He concludes, if you live only in terms of what you're getting out of life, then the old person gets smaller and harder and crabbier and more self-centered. Open your life to others. Think in terms of what you can give, your contribution to life, and the old person grows larger in heart, softer, kinder, and greater. As I was reading that, I couldn't help but think of uh, dear Vivian Spots, who just passed. Uh, we just had her funeral two weeks ago. And she was so remarkable, even in the brief time that I knew her, in the fact that, in spite of the fact that she was in Harrison House, she was in a little facility, and she increasingly had, you know, her physical health declined and declined and declined. And, you know, I visit a lot of people in, in places like that, in nursing homes and hospitals, and the tendency is for folks to kind of shrink down into all their diagnoses, right? You ask them how they're doing and they'll tell you 12 doctor's appointments. And I'm not saying people shouldn't. I'm there to listen to what they have to say. But when I look at how I want my life to be, I think, you know what? The, the happier people are the people like Vivian who are able to, to say, you ask her how she's doing. And she's, oh, that's boring. How are you doing? Tell me what's going on out there. I don't, <laughs> she was such a blessing to so many people. And that's why we loved her so much. And I think, whenever I meet folks like that, I think, you know what? I want to be like that. It's not my natural tendency. It is not. Like most of us, it's, it's just easy to get caught up in what's going on with us. But we can shrink our worlds. We have a choice of who that old person's gonna be, or more accurately, a million choices. We're making dozens of them every day. So choose wisely what you feed your heart and your mind. Obviously, not a single one of us has always made the best choices. As I was reading that story, I thought that could be discouraging for those of us who are have a little gray here, or a lot. <laughs> but while, while not, we haven't all made great choices all the time, but every single one of us can work on making better choices, on uh, deciding we're going to make choices that put God first. We can make choices to be generous and caring. And with those choices, our heart will start coming along and we'll become more generous and caring. We can make choices to be tellers of the truth and listeners to the truth. We can turn off the TV and pick up the Bible or close our eyes in prayer or call a friend who's having a tough time, even if we're having a tough time. 
something is discipling you, make sure you choose carefully what that is. Proverbs 23, 19 says, Listen, my son, and be wise and set your heart on the right path. Don't just stumble onto a path. Set your heart on it. Be intentional. The Lord is always there to help us when we set out to set our hearts on the right path. We're also told that the Lord tests our hearts. Proverbs 17, 3 says, um, compares God's work to a metalsmith. The crucible for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tests the heart. A crucible is a vessel of some material that can withstand very high temperatures, like porcelain or something, that allows you to melt silver. Gold requires an even higher temperature than silver, so maybe it was put more directly into a furnace. I don't know if that's why they said that. But that kind of testing is not something that you pass or fail, right? Rather, it is a process of purification. The high heat allows the dross, the junk that's in with the, the metal, to sink, leaving just purified gold or silver. God is able to use trials that do test us, but also purify us and make us more like Christ. Not magically, but because when we're in painful circumstances, we are always forced to make a choice, probably a couple of choices. The first is whether we're going to trust in God and his goodness. And it's okay if that takes some time and goes back and forth. Um, but seeking to trust him in his goodness. Um, and in a similar vein, Proverbs 21.2 says, A person may think their own ways are right, but the Lord weighs the heart. I didn't catch the sort of pun in there until I just read it. I don't know if it's there in the original. Our own ways are right, but the Lord weighs the heart. Um, you know what you are really good at? And I think I can say this for every one of you. You are really good about kidding yourself about how good you are. <laughs> kind of is like the self-righteousness thing, right? And you know how I know that? Because I am really good at kidding myself about how good I am. And then all of a sudden, something will come out of me and I'll go, oh. We can find great comfort in thinking we're better than we are until the Lord weighs our hearts on his scale. How much better if we are willing to look inside ourselves, to take an honest look, as David does in Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. David was called uh, a man after God's own heart. But boy, did he mess up sometimes, right? But he was willing to say, Lord, I, I stand before you, willing to have you point out the areas in me that are offensive to you because I don't want them there. I want you to change me. And if we will do that, I, I sincerely believe he will answer that prayer and work in our lives in that way. He will lead us in the way everlasting. Thomas Kelly was a professor at Haverford College just over in Delaware County. Um, and he wrote some books on spiritual practices. And he said this, Out in front of us is the drama of men and nations seething, struggling, laboring, dying, but within the silences of the souls of men, an eternal drama is ever being enacted. On the outcome of this inner drama rests, ultimately, the outer pageant of history. Our actions are directed by our hearts. We need to guard our hearts that what comes out is something worthy of 
of coming out. It's what it's godly. It's used working for good. Everything we are and accomplish and become is a direct result of what's happening in our hearts. Look around at our world today. How much of what is happening has to do with solely people's actions and how much has to do with their hearts. And what happens in our hearts can be shaped as we soak them in the Word of God, as we're honest before God <clears throat> in prayer, in confession, as we soak them in goodness and kindness and seek God's ways. I wanted to close in, in uh, um, a couple of verses from Proverbs that I know are favorites um, for many of you and kind of capture what we're talking about. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. Think about him in all your ways and he will guide you on the right paths. That as we trust him and rely on him rather than ourselves, acknowledge him, think on him, our, our drama, our inner drama would produce uh, a pageant that forever gives glory to God. Let's pray. Lord God, I just pray that for each of us we would, um, we would be seeking you with our whole heart. Lord, that we would guard our hearts from things that would tend to make us less like you and lean into those things that make us more like you. Lord, these are just difficult days for all of us. I pray that we would increasingly be people of grace, people of compassion, people who are at peace with one another and with ourselves and with you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to close as we um, sing Change My Heart, O oh God. Um, I don't know. Do you want to stand or you want to just sit? Lori's going to stand. You can do whatever you want, honestly. <laughs> Change my heart, oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God, change my heart, oh God, may I be like you. May I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forever. Amen. <laughs>